Hi Soulstar, welcome to our second online session. Um, today, first day of lockdown, we're going to do a lockdown special. Um, we're going to be focusing on staying where you are, not moving very far, and using uppercuts as my, our main technique. So today's going to be a little bit different to the last one we did. I'm going to just show you some technical stuff, go through the drills, and then I'm going to leave you to do them yourself, just like the last time. So you're going to need a timer again for this one. Um, but I'm going to skip the circuit and you can mix and match your own as well. I've also got a lovely friend to help me today. <laughs> um, so make sure you get your own warm up in. I'm not going to show you how to do that this time. And I'm going to let you do your own kind of circuits and drills and fitness, whatever you fancy. So without further ado, let's get in going with the uppercuts. So today's theme is all about staying inside, staying close to your opponent, and working using the uppercuts. This is probably the hardest kind of punch you can do, um, so you need to really focus on the technique. So someone suggested doing this one because this is a thing they needed to work on. What better thing to do whilst you're in isolation? Um, okay, so the first uppercut we're going to do is going to be the rear. Um, and with, as with all punches, you need to make sure you're coming exactly from your stance. One of your hands is going to protect, be protecting your face, as always. We're going to sit down, we're going to drive up and rotate at the same time. So with all our punches, as I say over and over again, all comes from the legs, all comes from the hips. You're driving with the legs and then it's a very small movement with the arms. You're not swinging up and down, it's more of a very small piston movement. So we're coming from our guard position, we sit down, keep the hands up in the guard position as you do so, and then as we stand up, I'm going to rotate on my back hip, and I'm going to move my hand up. So this is an uppercut rear hand under the chin. You can also throw it at a 45 degree angle to the solar plexus. So that looks like from this side, I'm gonna sit, drive and rotate. Other hand stays protecting my face, and this hand comes straight back to my chin to protect myself as quickly as possible. Sit, turn and drive, and comes back. So that's the rear uppercut. The next one is going to be the lead uppercut. So with this one, same deal, you're going to be sitting, driving, and turning as you stand. With this, you have to be a little bit more careful about where your weight is distributed, because if you're up close to your opponent, you don't want to be leaning in or staying too close because that's keeping your head in the firing line. So what I want you to do with this one is to sit down. As you stand and turn, your weight goes from this front leg to the back leg. Sit, drive and turn, my weight's on the back leg. From the side, sit, drive and turn, and my hand goes back to protect my face. Okay, so that's the basic technique. Feel free to rewind, do whatever you need to do. Um, and practice that one. What I want you to do is set up a timer that has two minutes of work time, 30 second rest, just like we did for the last session. Um, I'm gonna show you a few drills and then I'm gonna get you to go away and practice them yourself. So the first one is gonna be nice and simple, just the rear uppercut. And I want you to practice both to the head, to the body, so up and um, down, upper and lower target areas. So just a little reminder, hello you. <laughs> We're going to sit, drive, and then for the uh, head, it's further up, <laughs> getting into the, uh, the uppercuts. Okay, so off you go, that's your first drill. Okay, fantastic, so you should have done that drill, um, that first one. So the next drill is going to be exactly the same, except this time we're going to be using that lead uppercut. So again, we're going to sit down drive and stand for the uppercut under the chin and sit down drive and stand here 45 degrees for the uppercut to the body so remember when you're throwing that um, that shot you want your palm to be facing you you're using your hip rotation you're twisting and you're shifting your weight from that front leg to the back leg so again I want you to do two two minute rounds 30 second break between off you go Okay, lovely. So you've now done your single shots. 
um, but it's quite rare that you'll just throw uppercuts on their own, uh, particularly um, if you're up close. So what I want you to do is set up those uppercuts by throwing two other shots to start with. So nice and simple, not going to add loads and loads of things to the mix. We're just going to throw one, two, uppercut, uppercut, okay? So that's a straight jab, nice and straight. Again, we're rotating, we're using our hips. The arm comes out nice and straight. Shoulder protects your face. Other hand keeps you nice and defended. Nice and straight shot. And then the second one again. Rotating on that back foot. This is the most important part of the backhand. Wrist hands over just at the last moment. Hand comes back to protect your face. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, lead uppercut, rear uppercut. From the front, that looks like this. Remember, you're using your legs. Drive, drive. Drive and rotate. Try not to wind it up. We don't want to have too much movement in the arms. All comes from the legs. All comes from the legs. Okay, again, we're going to go two two minute rounds, 30 seconds rest. Off we go. Wonderful. Okay, so this is the end of our intermediate slash beginner um, drill. So I'm going to give you one more and then I'm going to move on to some more advanced ones that you can try or not, depending on how you feel. So this one, instead of leading and setting up those uppercuts, this time we're going to start with the uppercuts and then add something on the end. So from your guard position, we're going to sit, drive up with the lead uppercut, sit, drive up with the rear uppercut, lead hook, straight backhand. Okay, so with the lead hook, remember that you're also focusing on the hip rotation. So it's really important that you get this hip and you turn it around. That's how you generate the power. So you need to whip it round nice and sharp. So imagine you've got a pole going through your head, you're rotating around that pole. So the shot comes around, hits the side of the chin, your arm is at shoulder height and your palm is still facing downwards. It comes in at a 90 degree angle, okay? So we're gonna go uppercut under the chin, sit down, uppercut under the chin, hook on the side, and then the backhand. So this would be really good, for instance, if your opponent is very close, you land those two uppercuts, they start walking backwards, you land the hook as they get a little bit further away from you, and then you land the straight right, or the straight left if you're a southpaw. We've done the four drills, which were part of the kind of beginner intermediate. But I'm going to give you two other ones that you can do if you feel like you've mastered the other ones or you want to challenge yourself. So we've just been doing uppercuts, but another way of kind of extending that is to use uh, what we call a screw shot. So a screw shot is a bent arm shot. It's like a long range uppercut, a cross between a jab and an uppercut in a way. So rather than coming out like you would with a jab, nice and straight with the palm facing down. With a screw shot, your palm is facing up and the aim is to kind of knock your opponent's chin upwards so that you can land the next shot. So with this, we're going to, just like with the uppercut, sit and drive upwards. You're gonna use your hip rotation still, just like you would with any other shot. Sit, drive upwards. The only difference is that your palm is facing upwards. Sit, drive, and we're going to finish with a nice straight right. So from the front, sit, straight right. Okay, again, off we go. Two two minute rounds, 30 second break. Time is yours. Okay, so last one from me. This time we're gonna do the same thing again, except instead of a straight right, we're gonna do an overhand right. So this is uh, a really useful shot if you want to um, get over the top of someone else's shot that's coming at you. So if you imagine someone is throwing their jab at you, you're going to slip and you're going to bring your arm, your rear hand, over the top so you can catch them over their chin as they're throwing this jab. So you're imagining also that their chin is not that protected by their shoulder as they throw the jab. So if they're 
chin is particularly high, this is an especially useful shot. Okay, so what we're going to do, same again, nice screw shot, but over the top. So I don't want you to swing it and lean, and you still need to be balanced, but you're going to, instead of coming completely straight out, you're going to go over the top a little bit. So you're almost slipping a little bit to go over the top. Just imagine someone is throwing a shot at you at the same time, that will really help. This is another one you should really practice in the mirror, so make sure you get the technique right. So, screw shot, overhand right. Screw shot, overhand right. Okay, two minutes, twice through, 30 second rest, off you go. Okay, well done. So you've done all your drills, hopefully. And the next thing that I want you to do is to do five two minute rounds of shadow boxing. And I want you to incorporate all the things that we've done today. So I want you to think about uppercuts. And I think I want you to think about staying where you are, holding your feet, not running around the edge of the ring, for instance. Stay where you are, use those bent arm shots, have the confidence to actually stand your ground and defend. So don't forget also that you're going to need to defend shots as well. You're going to have to have a very tight guard because you're so close to your opponent. So you need to make sure that you are protected as well as being able to land those shots. If you're that close, they're going to be that close too. So five two minute rounds, 30 second break in between. Keep those things in mind. If you want to change what you're focusing on every single round, that can be really helpful. If you've got a mirror, that can also be really useful too just to make sure that you're keeping your form. So I want you to focus on your stance, making sure you've got this nice, solid, triangular base from which you can um, hip rotate your hips. I want you to make sure that that rear heel is off the floor, that you can rotate properly. That's really important for bent arm shots. And I want you to make sure that when you throw those uppercuts, you're not swinging, you're using your hips instead. So sit, drive, rather than pulling the arm back and swinging it up. Don't forget to defend yourself as well. That's the other half of boxing. So off we go. We're going to do five two-minute rounds, 30-second rest, shadow boxing. Off you go. Fantastic, you're finished. So <laughs> the last little bit, either you can go away and do your own circuit and fitness, this is where we would do that normally in our session on our Tuesday, um, or you can just go straight into the cool down. Just make sure that you, you get a good stretch in. I don't want you to get any injuries, I don't want you to come back to Solstar with any niggling problems. So I'm gonna do a few more circuit kind of fitness exercise videos as well. Um, so you can pick and choose your own workout almost. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. See you next time.